Hello and welcome to yet another YouTube video here on this channel. As you might know already, Sublime, a note-taking second brain application that feels a little different. I've talked about it in uh, on my channel a couple of times before. I also have a podcast episode with the founder of Sublime, uh, which I will link up here somewhere so you can check that out. Out. But in today's video, we are diving into Sublime again because they recently launched with their new pricing plan. Uh, and I will talk about the pricing plan. I will talk about the whole new vibe of uh, and the website of uh, Sublime. The application is pretty much the same. There is, uh, there have of course been a few improvements, but uh, I will not go into like the details of Sublime. I will rather show you how. I am personally using Sublime, and just a quick disclaimer here, the application I got the lifetime plan, um, so a while back um, they reached out and I was lucky enough to get the lifetime plan uh, for free because I covered them in a few videos uh, last year. Uh, but let's now uh, just jump into the application. So as I said, I got this application uh, back when it was still uh, in a really early stage, I probably would not have purchased it uh, because I didn't think uh, I needed an application uh, like this. I still uh, don't think I must have an application like this in my workflow. But if I had a little bit of extra money, I think having something like this is great. So let's uh, look at the pricing here first. So it has... Uh, a few different pricing plans here. You have the basic plan, which is free. You have the premium, which is $75 a year. With that, you actually get most of the features and abilities. So uh, the Kindle Readvisor, Raycast integration, unlimited related cards, unlimited cards, collections and canvases, advanced privacy and collaboration. Uh, the collaboration thing I've been really excited about. Premium badge, early access to new features. With the addition uh, of, uh, or if you choose the premium plan instead, which is a hundred each year, still isn't that terrible. You get everything, and you get the Substack paid membership, uh, discount on merch and designs, uh, access to our archives, Vault, Vision Deck, raw files, and other behind the scenes. So you would um, pretty much be paying more uh, just to uh, support the application and with that you get like Substack paid memberships and access to archives, uh, Vault Vision Deck raw files, uh, Figma files and other behind the scenes. They also have the lifetime plan which is a one time 400 USD. With that you get uh, everything I mentioned and the premium uh, and you get a concierge one on one onboarding call and uh, investor updates. Uh, so that basically covers the pricing. I don't think that it is too expensive for what it is. Like the $75 a year plan isn't too bad. I am i can't do the math on how much that is per month. But uh, it doesn't come out to too much. Um, so uh, not terrible pricing. Let's jump into the application. So I am using this uh, very differently uh, from like a regular second brain application. I uh, do a lot of capturing here, but it is a little different. So I heavily rely on not over capturing uh, inside of uh, Sublime. I don't use the application every day, or let me rephrase, I check the application pretty much every day. I don't capture something every single day. Like I don't take a note every single day. Uh, Think of this as, like, I think of this as my uh, commonplace book. This is where I go for inspiration, not necessarily for uh, ideas for my, like, if I have an idea and I have notes on a blog post, don't, uh, those uh, notes will not go into Sublime. Uh, they will um, go into another note-taking app. The other way around, like if I have an uh, idea for a blog post, I can jump into Sublime and I can start looking for things. But mostly I've been just looking at it for inspiration. If you just, if I just open up my collections, let me just log in again. If I now quickly just 
open up my collections here, you can see that I have like, what is productivity? How can we become more creative? AI is destroying our thinking design inspo. I have a lot of design inspo. I have other inspirations. So let's just open this up. So no amount of anxiety makes any difference to anything that is going to happen. Uh, protect your mental health at all costs. Someone told you it was impossible, so you didn't even try. So things that really inspire me. Uh, and just like, I would go back to the idea of a commonplace book. This is my commonplace book. So here I have some UI UX inspiration. I am currently working on a website, so this is actually perfect. Some shower thoughts, funny memes, PKM tools I add into here. Uh, my designs are here. Again, I have actually I have two motivations. Uh, let me go back up here and check. Uh, because I showed you one, I think I have two. Um, no, the, this one is called inspiration and I have another one called motivation. I am not sure what the difference between those two are, but let's jump into They do the same thing. So like this lives in multiple different places. This lives in multiple different places. So I think the way I th uh, was thinking about it was like motivation is for when I'm feeling down. Uh, inspiration is for when I'm looking for... Uh, a creative idea. I think that's how I, that was how I was looking into it. But we also have a canvas feature. So I haven't used this a lot, but let's create a test canvas. This is a TLDR uh, canvas. So uh, basically a whiteboarding tool. But what's really cool about this, like you have the basic whiteboarding abilities. Most people on my um, on my uh, YouTube channel and people who watch my content have used a whiteboard before so I won't go too deep into this but you have the ability to like add different stuff here but that isn't the coolest part so here I can actually find or ask a question uh, uh, to my own library so let's say I was writing about note-taking so this comes up I can drag this and I can drag uh, this and um, so as you can see, I don't have enough things for it to do a good job. I don't think I have a lot of things in my note taking, but I think this would be uh, interesting. Let's just add a sticky note here as well. And I can start adding, like uh, connecting different things and ideas together. And there are many use cases for this. Like I'm currently working on a project where the whiteboard has been a great uh, to help me just come up with ideas and I actually used Miro for that uh, but um, I could have used uh, Sublime as well if I wanted to use Sublime in more of a second brain way and not a commonplace way uh, but I could also ask like the Sublime library because everything in Sublime you can choose whether or not it should be private so if I now just close this and I go ahead and I just delete this. Let's delete the canvas. I can choose whether or not uh, this, for example, is private. You can see the lock here. Or if I want to share it with people, which I do with most of the things, I don't leave them uh, private. I allow people to see. And people can actually subscribe to my uh, uh, lists or collections. They can add things into their own library and I can also jump into uh, other people or jump into the sublime uh, inspiration inspiration engine that's what they're calling it and I can look for things so uh, if this was interesting I could choose to add that into my collections and I could also do a search for note-taking I could also just ask a question so let's do note-taking so good productive writing is based on good note-taking Let's add that to uh, note-taking, add to library like this. Now it is a part of my library. Um, this one is also quite good. Let's add that to note-taking as well. And I could go and I could do this, but I could also jump into this and I could see the related engine. This is probably the best part about Sublime. When you click into a card, um, you can see uh, all of the cards that relate back to this card. Uh, so I can see all of the different cards that people have uh, 
added to their libraries or added to the public library. Uh, and I can see uh, like related cards to every one of these. I can also click on this right here to see related to this one uh, card and I could go ahead and I could dive into the rabbit hole. This has actually been something I've done a lot uh, when I, because I had a tendency to like just jump onto social media when I had a few minutes between meetings, for example. Now I try to do this instead. So my use case for this application isn't like everyone else's use case because uh, the application, like applications can of course be used exactly the way you want to use them. So you could use them uh, like I use Sublime like I do, but the application is meant to be a place where you store ideas and you turn them into something. That is where the canvas comes in. You turn them into, let's say, a blog post, an article, a YouTube video. I am thinking about it differently. I'm thinking about it like a commonplace notebook, which I go through from time to time. I don't have tasks. You can't have tasks in here, but like I don't have anything related to actual work. I if I choose to never do anything with uh, the things I've saved onto Sublime, that is totally okay. I have it as a common place for all of the things I find uh, interesting. So I have it for that specific use case. And as I said, that isn't a use case I necessarily need, um, but I really like the application. It isn't that, but it wouldn't be something like it wouldn't be something I couldn't live without and I had to pay for. Uh, but as I said, since I got the um, I got the uh, one time uh, subscription for free, I thought that um, this was a good way of using it. And it is like it isn't a necessity. It is just something that is great to have. But for a lot of people. Uh, having a commonplace book is a necessity and uh, even more importantly for a lot of people especially those who do a lot of writing like I film these YouTube videos but there isn't a lot of writing I have like a few bullet points but let's say you wrote a lot of blog posts or you uh, wrote a lot of like huge video scripts or reports or whatever it is this could actually help you a lot or if you did a lot of design I do of course do some design and you saw that I had some inspiration for UI UX uh, but most of the like design I do I uh, work do in my uh, day job where we use different applications so Sublime doesn't work for that either but like for many people, I think this could be an application they had as their daily driver. I definitely think it deserves a shot. It has a like free trial where you're limited to 50 cards, you're limited to three private collections and three canvases, which gives you the ability to just test out the application. It isn't a real free plan, more of a like free trial of the application. I don't have an issue with applications doing that. Some people might. But uh, that covers my thought on the uh, thoughts on Sublime and the launch, and I am actually really excited about it. I think the, especially the related engine and the canvas uh, are two important features that I probably will use a little bit more going forward, especially the canvas, the related engine I've been using ever since I got the application as like a replacement for social media. But that covers it for today's video. If you have any questions, feel free to leave them down below and I will try to get to them as soon as I can. Thank you so, so much for watching today's video.